Welcome to the Three Piece Podcast, a show where three Call of Duty amateurs discuss player development to improve your in-game performance. New episodes every Monday at 7 a.m. EST to start your week off with a scoop of inspiration. So, today, we got Ralphie, Rager, yeah. Valone. That's how I say it, right? Valone? Valon. Valon? <laughs> shit, shit. I almost had it. But uh, we got him for episode six of the Three Piece Podcast. And, you know, it's been a minute since you've been around in the COD scene. You know, you've still been around, but you haven't been too active. So uh, tell everyone what you've been up to, man. Well, I was I played up until BO4. And that's when shit kind of got shaky, kind of like in my life. Um, I moved to Florida from New Jersey. And yeah. I'm with my aunt. Um, and then she ended up losing her job. So we moved. So I moved back to New Jersey. And she moved to New Orleans. So I went into foster care. Oh, shit. I wasn't able to play COD. Like, I'll, Yeah, I wasn't able to play COD, like, really, like, at all. Like, I haven't been able yeah. to play COD since I was with my aunt. So, yeah. and then I moved, I moved around, like, New Jersey a lot. I was, like, up north and down south. And now I'm by Philly. Okay. And then, like, for a few, for, like, eight months, I went into rehab. But uh, that's why I wasn't tweeting at all. Oh, but uh, I just I got out like in May, so hey, shit, man. that's well, basically where I've been at. That well, I'm glad that you got out and everything. So um, that's perfectly yeah. going to tie into like you know I know one of the questions I wanted to talk to you about was the hotel. We're going to get into that, but um, and tell anyone that doesn't know you like your in depth story when it comes to Call of Duty, not just the story that you would tell someone on like. You know, just a podcast. I mean, the story you tell your grandkids if they asked about it, like in yeah. depth, man. That's the that's the whole movie, bro. But uh, so we got time. Yeah, that's the <laughs> whole point, man. Talk as long as yeah. you want. Go in in depth as possible from the very beginning to where you're at now. Well, shit. I mean, I I like. I mean, I guess it pretty much starts like most kids. You know, you get you get an Xbox and shit. You start playing like just video games. And you know, I discovered Call of Duty. I played, I played the War That War demo. I think that was my first ever COD. Uh huh. Um, I played like the demo because I didn't like buy. I played like all demos when I first got my Xbox. I didn't play like any like full games. I got MW3 though, towards like the end of like 2011, like right before or the end of 2012, right before BO2 drops. Uh, I was trash. Like I already put on like a 50 inch on my couch. Like I sucked, but. Uh, eventually, BO2 came out, and I think that Christmas that BO2 dropped, I got my own monitor, I got my own Xbox to put in my room, had like a nice little setup on my dresser, a little ghetto setup, but it was pretty nice. Everyone has it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think like I wasn't like known or anything, like, I was still just playing pubs and shit, but that's when like I, I discovered MLG and shit. I seen like MLG Anaheim and BO2, and I was like, damn, I want to do this like pro gaming shit. I started playing League Play, like, um... I started playing like league play, like, like, I think so, so in the end of the summer, like a, a BO two. I was like, I was like trying to go pro. I thought you can go pro for league play. Like I didn't know like that's not how it worked, but I thought like you can go pro off that shit. Well, there was and a then, point um, that you you could get into champs by your league play placing though. That that was kind of yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Was there actually? Champ. Yeah, yeah. yeah Champs Champs are you serious? That's crazy. I did not know that about that. It was um, I forgot what I think it was. I think it was like Codcast. They had like a moment where they had talked about how um, they were kind of remembering staying up. Like I think Pac-Man said his team had to stay up for like thirty-six hours going into that final night because like if you didn't play for like even an hour, like you were losing your spot going to Champs. Yeah, that's right. crazy. I had never heard about that. Yeah, no, it it was pretty crazy. It was, it was like a gladiator pit on league play for a while. All right, you good no, now? yeah, for sure, bro. Like that shit was wild. All right, so yeah, you can you can keep going now. I know you had a little interruption. Oh yeah, yeah, but um, just see, like I, I play league play, and then like I didn't know that like you you have to go pro on like the COD that's out that year. So when Ghost came out, I was still playing Black Ops, so I hated mm-hmm. Ghost, and I was still trying to go pro on Bo2. So I played league play for a whole year. On Black Ops 2 during Ghost, I didn't play Ghost. I had like a bunch of different gamer tags, like Apex Fusion, BMX prototype, just like random shit. Um, and then like AW came out, and um, I I got an Xbox One that year, the year AW dropped, and um, 
I remember I had like a bunch of homies from League play that like that like um that that like switched to Xbox One for for AW and they were like yo we're trying to go pro like we're trying to play like this shit like legit mm-hmm. and then they introduced me to game battles and I was like oh shit it's like the real deal bro we're playing GBs now yeah. and like they had the whole ladder and all that shit four v four so I started playing GBs and then like I still had this whack ass gamer tag and I remember I remember one time like we was playing and this is this this is crazy but I was playing. But this go this guy Tyler, he's like, bro, Ralph, you are such a fucking rager, bro. Like all you do is rage. And I'm like, I like that. I yeah. like that. <laughs> so my first ever GT was Ralphie the Rager. And then like I, I kept playing AW for like that whole year, watching events, all that shit. And then um towards the end of AW, like I started like getting on Twitter and shit. And that's when I met I saw my John. I was on Twitter and shit, looking for people. Like, I was about to go to UMG DC with my dad. Like, I was trying to play at the event. I was trying to play the 2v2 at the event. So I was like, can people walk us on the John. That was, like, my first event. That was, like, the only major event I went to. I went to a couple NJ rides. But that was, like, the only like, major I went to. So I was, like, AW. But I still didn't blow up yet. Like, I didn't blow up until Black Ops 3. So I, so I was still I was still playing underage variant. Like, I didn't, I didn't give a fuck about SND. Um... Like, I, I, I still, like, even though the age rule came out, like, I was still trying to go pro. Like, I didn't, I was playing underage variants, playing, like, Twitter leagues, bullshit like that, going to NGA rods. I went to NGA rod in March. I got DFR the Gunna. That shit was fucking hilarious, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that God. was quite the sight, man. Wait, was that <laughs> ET, was that was, was that ETG eleven? No, no it was that MJ. was ETG in March twenty sixteen. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. We got remember the lobby? Oh right, Gunner didn't even play at that event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, once again, man, yeah, man. you was on, you was on a tour, right, or something like that. Yeah, torch. Yes, sir. Torch. Yeah, that's shit. Bro, yeah. John, I still got my tag. Like, uh, you remember the tags that they had? Yeah, I still have it up in my desk. Really? Or I, my uh, drawer in my bedroom. I have my shirt in like a thing right, right behind my desk. I got it up there. I think it's. I have no idea how I got, how I got the tag though. Uh, I have so many of my IRLs that'll just send me pictures of like the wristband on their wrist, and all of them have it, bro. It was. I sent it out to everyone, but uh, yeah, no, Ralphie was uh, definitely quite the presence at that event, man. I'll tell you what, that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun time. So, yeah, for uh, sure. I had my hood up that whole event, too. I remember I had my hoodie up that whole event, bro. Like, yeah, no you walked in. You looked like Illy walking down the hallway. So. <laughs> Literally, bro. Yeah, no. So um, after going to your NJ Rod events and stuff like that, I know that's kind of when your whole house situation happened. So do you yeah, want to yeah, yeah. I- explain that to everyone? Um, you don't have to go super in-depth of what you don't want to talk about, obviously. But uh, yeah, you yeah. are willing to share how that affected yeah, so, your call of duty so like so like the the drop of bo3 like that literally the day bo3 dropped on the 6th november i remember the day yeah i had like a, i had like a little house fire my mom had left a, like a candle uh she, like lit in the back of the house um, it's the day of black ops 3 yeah the day that shit Damn, dropped off. i didn't know that friend, Damn, that's bro. Damn. yeah she was wild so yeah, we had like a house fire and it like, spread pretty far. Like no one got hurt, nothing like that. Everyone got, even my dog, like, everyone was safe. My dad was at work and then it was just me and my sister, my dog, and my mom. We all got out. But, um, you know, the house was like pretty fucked up and like we couldn't live there for like a year. So I, so we actually, my dad um had like a lot of connections in the town. He, he was like into politics, he was on the board of vets. So he, he like, knew a few people who like had houses. So we, we, we did end up moving into a house. So I didn't move into the hotel yet. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a we had like a house, and that's when like I was playing Black Ops Three and shit. But then um, towards the end of Black Ops Three, and then like after I blew up and made that whole like my shots electric video, and like I blew up and all that shit. Like I um, that's when like we had to move out the house and move into a hotel. So like the beginning of IW, like I was really playing, I was playing S and D turns from a hotel, bro. Like, that shit was wild. I couldn't stream or nothing. I was just playing from a fucking hotel, and I and I won my first ever gold in that hotel, bro. Like it was like I, a two v two M with with, with, uh, with Halo, bro. I that remember shit was watching that shit. I see. I remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I think I knew you a bit before that, like a bit before the uh, the clip. And I remember hearing yeah. about shit. And I was like, I mean, given I was like thirteen at the time, and I was like, who the hell is this kid? You know, I'll play with all these players because the video. I got so salty. But at the end of the day, I mean, like networking is networking. It paid off. So it's like yeah, literally. 
Like, you got I, mad hate for it though. Yeah, uh, I mean, I was, I don't wait, like, I see that video still to this day. Like, people tweet that shit at me. Like, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, to this day. Like, I see really? that shit on a meme page on Instagram with like 600k <laughs> followers. <laughs> <laughs> man, that shit's never. Oh, Damn, man. man. Oh. How does yeah. that feel to be like a part of the history, though? No, I mean, for sure, bro, because that shit, like, my shot's electric. People still say that shit to this day. Bro, electric. my Come sister on. would say Ralphie, it to no me. No bullshit, though. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's crazy though. You deadass are like a part of Kai history. Like not not just in the local scene. Like everybody knew about it. That's some that's some crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. At the end of it the is day. crazy thing about like honestly, you know. So does yeah, that sure. motivate you at all to now that uh, I don't know oh, if you're in the position yeah. now to come back, but uh, if you have the ability to, does that motivate you to want to come back, or are you kind of like you know I have my 15 minutes of fame. I'm gonna leave it at that. I mean, in all honesty, like. I think I think I'm gonna go with the latter because like, you know I you know, like I did all that COD shit. It was a great time. Like I had a, I had a lot of years and like I, I won a lot. You know I met a lot of people. Like I had a good time and I was like a kid. Like I didn't have any responsibilities. But like I'm at this point where it's like I gotta like I gotta get through high school. I gotta go to college and like I'm not in a position. Like a lot of people are, are like like are, like in a position to like stay at their parents' house and like play COD and shit. Like maybe give it a year or two, see if they can go pro. Like I'm just not in that position. You know, I love Call of Duty. Like, I still keep up with it. I'll still be on Twitter, tweeting and all that shit. But I just don't see myself coming back, to be completely honest with you. So, since you wanted to come on here and talk about the mental health, because that's what we kind of talk about primarily, um, in what ways did you struggle in the way of Call of Duty and your mental health tying directly? Man, I, I used to talk about this shit a lot, you know, like, I think I think it got really bad, sort of like the beginning of World War II, and it could kind of tie into like what's going on in like real life. But like at the same time, like I just, you know, like I, like I would just be playing COD, like trying to win, and people would shit on me. Like people would like talk mad shit, and like that shit made me feel bad. You know what I mean? Like like the hate in the community on people coming up. Like some people, some people got thicker skin than others, but like for me, it was like you know. Like, yeah, that shit hurt, you know what I mean? Like, people yeah. talking shit, and it, and it was like, it was like, I just felt like I was just down bad, like, playing attorneys all day in my room, like, in the dark, like, like, just playing all day, 24-7, like, having a trash sweep schedule, waking up 5 p.m. in the afternoon, going to bed at, like, 4 a.m., like, shit like that, like, in retrospect, it was just, like, it was just not the way to, to live, and, like, I, and that's why it affected my mental health so much, and it'll affect anyone's mental health, like. Yeah, it, it adds up. I, yeah, honestly, like. Like I see, I see, I still see nowadays. Like people are constantly feeling like they're not having fun, like playing the game. Like they're 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 stressing. Like all these people trying to be pro. Like they're they're, they're throwing all these hours at it, and it's fucking up their mental health because they're not they're not having the time to like like relax or like be happy and shit like that. Like they're stressing twenty four seven, and that shit fucks with your mental health for sure. So we obviously have no. I want to say infrastructure around keeping that intact for players in the way of like professional teams don't just have coaches and like therapists for their teams. You know, yeah. they sit down and they, they talk about stuff, but what ways do you think organizations could help players and not even just the players of their own teams, but to all their fans and all the players that are in the challengers, how can they push some kind of movement that'll just help the longevity of it? Because quite honestly, people burn out really quick and there's no longevity if people are burning out. I mean, that's that's a tough one. You know, like, I'm sure if it was that, like if it was easy, like someone would have already done it. But in my opinion, I think, um, you know, like like having like, I guess, yeah, like, a dead, like an HR type kind of like, you know, like, shit for these organizations, like, making sure the play, like, right? you know, every company has, like, HR, like, making sure, like, everyone's, like, health, wealth, and, like, and, like, well-being is, like, you know, like, kept in check. Um, you know, like, a lot of these players, like, they're, they're put through the grinder, and um, no one really checks up on them. You know, like, people are always, like, you know, people will like, be, like, oh, keep going and like, everything, but, like, no one's really checking up on them. I'm not saying, like, a dedicated therapist, but, like, something, like, within the companies, like, within these organizations to, like, you know, like, make sure, like, their well-being is, like, you know, like, even if they, even if they, like, really, like, don't feel like putting themselves, like, getting onto Scram or something, like, having, like, like, put a sub in or something, you know? Like, letting, letting these guys take breaks. I mean, you, this last year, there were, like, tournaments back to back to back every weekend. Like, 
and then the amateur scene these guys were grinding hours every day like these back-to-back tournaments every weekend like they gotta like change that you know what i mean like because you like people people just don't have the time like to to grind every like a, like a tournament every weekend for 12 hours like you gotta go outside like you gotta you know what i mean like you gotta you, you can't be doing that um but i don't i mean i really don't know how these organizations could uh because like where we, where we like you know like make sure their players are like happy and like healthy you know like it's just something that you got to work on yeah i, I think, think uh oh yeah you know you go you got to uh, i was gonna say uh i think gunna had spoken something on it um last week like it feels like his job as a coach is to check up on his players yeah um and then in terms of like how packed the schedule is like the way he was talking about it it's nothing like it used to be like you maybe would scrim maybe like five days of the week maybe like maybe like for a month going into a local but like other than that like you're hardly really scrimming in my personal opinion as like a as a underage variant kid um but like he, the way he was talking about with his team is it was like monday monday through friday you have practice for he said what there's a two there's a 2 p.m scrim a, a, a two a two of, uh, yeah yeah every and two then, hours and then you have challengers on Saturday, and he said Sundays they have off unless you make it to the was it top eight, top sixteen. Yeah, you make it to yeah, top eight. The next day, yeah. So even that, so it's, assuming you go all the way and you win that cup or you win that open event, that's only half a day off. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, definitely coaches like I say because of just the way Call of Duty is, they kind of have to. And I don't know if a lot of coaches are actually doing this, like kind of taking that role as the guy who checks up on their team because I think that's really overlooked in the COD scene. Um, but just from your personal experience, I, I want to ask you, what do you think, like, from your experiences through COD and dealing with your own mental challenges, um, what's, what are some, like, I guess, advice or, like, tips that you think you could give to the COD community for people who are going through some stuff that you could personally relay? Um, I mean, just out of personal experience, like in, like, I would say, like, like, pick up your phone, you know what I mean? Like, text someone, text someone, like, yo, how you doing? Like, you want to hang out? Like, let's, let's, let's do some. Like, you know, like, you know, I don't know, like, get, you know, like, get off the game a little bit. Like, I don't know, I'm not like that guy, but, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, like, you put out these out, like, these streamers are grinding these hours, the, the pros are grinding these hours, like, it's just not, like, I, I don't know, like, I'm personal experience, like, it depends what you are. If you're a pro, that's different. This is really your job. I can see like playing these hours, but if you're like an underage, like S and D streamer, like you know, there's really there's really so much like you're you're making off this game, and you gotta like understand like there's you got other responsibilities, you know what I mean? Like, like I've seen a lot of these guys like not like you know not have like a job or like not like and I'm not saying pros, but like you know like the streamers, the S and D kids, like a lot of these guys like don't have a job or like. Or, or like, or like, not going to school, and and that's not like personal experience. Like, I, I, I gave up going to school for a whole year just to play COD. Like, it's stuff like that that's like that's like you shouldn't be doing. Like, that's my advice is like, you know, hang out, hang out with some people. Like, you know, hang out with your friends. Like, you know, dedicate time to your loved ones. Like, get on the game when when like you you know you have the time, and don't like push other things aside to like get on the game. So in your off time. You know, he was saying some of the things to push to the college community. What are, what are some things that you've personally done and learned and incorporated into your daily life? Or maybe, you know, just a couple things that you do when you get too stressed out that COD players could potentially uh, do as well. Well, for sure, it helps to surround yourself with family. Like, when, when I would lose a tournament and I would go downstairs, like, out my room and like, just hang out with my, my sister and my mom, like... Like, that would for sure, like, make things better. You know what I mean? Like, like if you got, like, if you got, like, plans, like, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, like, so, like, say, like, oh, you stream for a certain amount of time, and then, like, you go out for, like, another certain amount of time. You know what I mean? Like, you could stream from, like, say, like, 12 to 4, 12 to 5, and then, like, you go out with your friends, like, that night. Like, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, um, like, in my, free, I mean, right now, I have a lot of free time. Like, you know, I'm, I'm doing school, and online school ends really early for me right now. It ends at 1130. Each class is, like, cut. So I have a lot of free time to like do other things, and I'm not playing COD at all. So, like, I, you know, that's just my like, that's just what I'm doing. But for other people that you know are playing COD, like, I guess, um, like, definitely like dedicate time. I don't know, dedicate time to like to like 
just relieving stress. You know what I mean? Like, like hanging out with your loved ones. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna ask you some of the three most influential people that have helped you throughout your college community and what about them uh, was so influential to you? Question. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, I've had a lot of people help me out and I hate to like, you know, like to put like a top three and I guess it depends on like, what we're talking about, like who's in my top three. But as far as like who really like taught me a lot, I would say like top three, like Standy, Tiny and Convix. Um, Standy, like, all three of these guys were my duo at one point. And then Standy, like, he, like, he, he helped me out a lot, like, with, like, when it came to, like, personal stuff, like, but I wasn't going to school, like, he would, like, FaceTime me at school, he's like, hey, bro, look, like, I'm at school right now, like, hope you're doing good, um, remember, bro, it's always there when you want to go back, like, you know, I'm, I hope you're doing good, like, he would always play with me and stuff, like, you know, so if, if I didn't have, like, enough money to get into a tournament, like, he would, he would, he would, um, he would, like, help me out. Stuff like that, like he, you know, he really like helped me out. As far as Tiny goes, like he was like a big mentor for me. Like he had already made it in the S and D scene when I was coming up, and he like he could he like there was a time where he could have really played with anyone he wanted. Like he was on top of like the S and D scene, and he like played with me a lot. And I'm like, and I, that made me like I don't know, like I felt very special for that because like he wanted to bring me up, but like, he saw something that like 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 that like I was like you know like talented and that like i could be good and like even though when i was like a meme and like everyone thought i was trash like he still played with me and then like as far as comic shows like I, he was just he was just like he was just that guy he's just the duo like we, we won tournaments like 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 there was like a special tournament like every day like after school like when i was in eighth grade like the the 230 2v2 gb would get posted every day and we would always enter it like at the same time every day like we would like, we won it for like three weeks straight in, in, like, May of, like, 2017, IW. Like, so that, that guy was the duo. Um, and that whole group of, like, terrorizing, I don't know if you know, like, terrorizing, is there, like, a group of S&D kids? Like, that whole group of, like, TR, like, was, like, my boys. And, like, that was, like, the, you know. So, I, but, like, yeah, like, those are, like, my top three, like, most influential people for sure. You talked about uh, a little bit of, like, you know, Tiny and you playing with him and a bunch of those S&D guys. I'm just curious now because you talked a little bit about, um, and your story but just to go into more detail can you kind of talk us through the moment from when you started to blow up to the point where you got to play with all these people kind of like break it down for us yeah yeah yeah. so so yeah i got blew up. i made that video uh i blew up but at that time like no one was really hitting me up like no one was like oh this like I, this guy made a video i want to play with him you know what i mean like, no one's hitting me up but around that time like i switched to snd scene and I was playing with like the NJ Rod kids from that community. So we were playing S and D shots against each other. It was like me, like, um, it was like me, Galaxy, um, like man, what's his name? Like Revy. Like we were just playing S and D shots. and uh, we would play the same we would play each other like like the same like we would just play each other back to back, like the same kids, we would chow each other. And I'm trying to think of some other names, but like it was just all those NJ Rod kids, like Strat and kids like that. Huh, Mark. Um, so we would okay. just all play S and D shots and and, and and then like Rook Reality hit me up, and Rook Re and Rook Reality oh. was like, <laughs> and Amazing. this kid was like, this kid was like coming up, like he was he had just won like a tournament like on UMG, like he beat like Blast One stuff, Mr. and I was like, yo, like he hit me up, he's like, bro, let's play some of these trains, and then like his boys, I think like Strixie and like Atronify, like his boys had just won like a big prime tournament, and like those prime tournaments were like the biggest thing you can win S and D at the time. So, like, they were, like, really good. And so, like, me, Book Reality, Strix, we, we started playing on like, UMG tournaments. And that's when I started, my stream started to blow up a little bit. Like, I started, like, placing in these S&D tournaments. Like, I started placing. And then, like, I moved to, you know, I W came out and I was living in a hotel. And I started playing, like, those S&D tournaments. I won my first gold, my M. And then I didn't win another tournament until I moved back into my house. I won a, I won a, X, a couple Xbox golds with Manivity. I won, I, I won, like, a gold a month for, like, a few months. And then things really got big when I met Terrorizing. Like, these kids were like, these kids had bowed up in S&D in 2016. And they were like, they were like big, like, you know, like just S&D grinders. And th and King Solar hit me up and gave me the team speak, like the whole Terrorizing team speak. And I joined. But I said one word. I was like, yo. And you know, they started dying laughing. They're like, bro, no way that this kid, bro. Like, no way this is a Rager Cod, bro. Like, he's in our team speak. Like, they started clowning me. 
And then, um, yeah, like, you know, we just, I started grinding those SD terms for convicts, like, throughout, like, April and May of 2017. And then what really blew me up was, like, we saw, I started playing like, big chows. Like, I'm talking, like, $100 chows. And at the time, like, everyone's playing, like, these these crazy, like, $500,000 chows. But at the time, like, there was no CMG. And UMG had a cap on the wager limit. So it was only, like, 100. So, like, 100 is, like, the highest wager you could play. So, like, you've, if you put a like, $100 chow, like, you were, like, a high tier. Like, you were, like, crazy. Like, for wagering that much money on Call of Duty, you know? Like, that was, like, a big deal back then. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I started playing crazy high, like, rover chows with, like, Sandy and, like, Jinshroy, Onyx. Like, just, like, these high tiers. Like, I was playing with these big chows. And, and I remember, like, the biggest chow I played, it was, like, it was against TJ and Formal with Tiny. And that, like, blew me up. Because, like, when I played Formal, I got turned on by Formal and the clip went viral. And I went, like, Weaker's Odd Shot video. Like, it, like I blew up. It was, like, crazy. Was that on Throwback and I dub? I think oh, I remember I think that. On, I think it was on Crusher. Oh man, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh bro, I just saw Weaker was talking about starting his YouTube back up and doing those highlights again and shit. And uh, it yeah. made me want to ask you, man, if you were to pitch any kind of content to someone, because you know you used to have a little bit of stuff going on. Yeah. What would you do in the way of this community now, in the way it is? I mean, everyone's kind of doing the same thing right now. You know, it's either you're streaming Warzone or you're like, like, you know, like, I don't know, just like, yeah, like pretty much everyone's streaming Warzone right now or streaming like, you know, SND. Like, very few people are even playing SND anymore because it kind of died out. And it's like, you, everyone's doing the same thing. And it's like, you're not going to like blow up like doing the same thing. You know, as like, as like guys that have already blown up. Like, yeah, you know, some people get lucky. They're like, they, they win like, crazy big war zone tournaments and they might blow up a little bit but you know it's really it really like you gotta do your own thing and for me i think that like something like content wise i don't know like i i guess you kind of I, I don't know it's weird you know what i mean like ever like i don't i don't know like i i guess um like something like a podcast for sure like that's like a, that's like a good idea like i think like you know so, like these um these youtube videos that octane are doing Mm-hmm. Like we're you know like those those are for, those are like blown up for sure those are those are bangers like those are blown up and and I think like stuff like that is unique you know what I mean like just you know just streaming Warzone and stuff like that's not gonna blow you up but you gotta make your own content like you know I don't know like some some of these I feel like some of these like analysts these like these like COD pro analysts you know like Easy Mac and stuff these guys should be like. Like getting on YouTube and like and like talking like analyzing stuff, like analyzing right. the game. Like that's that's probably like a big like oh, that'll sure, probably be yeah. like yeah that'll probably build them up a little bit. Like people probably watch that you know like, to get on like start like analyzing, doing over under stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess like stuff like something like that would for sure like would be like a different kind of original like way to like go about doing content <laughs> right now on COD. Yeah, no, I I, I think those are good ideas. Yeah, what are you gonna say, Liam? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, no, for sure. I definitely think that content in, like, Call of Duty, I mean, whether this is just because, like, how the game has progressed from, like, because, I mean, back when we all started playing, back in BO2, like, it was all trickshotting, FaZe Clan ran YouTube, you know what I mean? People were posting, like, you know, montage and all that, but that definitely died down. I think yeah. uh, the opportunity to have, like, I guess, original content is YouTube is just, like, completely wide open. I mean, like, there's literally a handful of people who are doing what John's doing right now um octane's doing some, something no one else is doing there's, and there's literally nobody who's doing what you said ralphie about the uh um kind of like analyzing and breaking down gameplay like literally not a single person pros yeah. aren't doing it amps some of them don't even know how to do it so it's, um that's definitely something um but speaking on that uh what do you think that's like a problem for the future of cod though that the lack of content because i think that the new generation we had such a gate way to the new like to, to cod like i mean we had so many things to get us into cod but nowadays you don't really see like younger players anymore coming into the cod scene you don't see the you know the 13 14 year olds so. yeah 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 i mean you know i think i think snd dying for sure like had like a big thing to do with that like as an underage sure like you really can't do much and like snd stream was like a like a big like thing to like blow up in but that died out and i mean Warzone, like, you know, like, there's already, like, a handful of, like, people that, like, you know, that get thousands of viewers. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I think, like, if it's a problem, like, I mean, 
people are saying like, oh, like viewership's at an all time high. You know what I mean? Like there's always those stats that like viewership's growing and and stuff like that. Like that MW sold the most like COD, like sold the most like, like, you know, units out of like all the CODs. So like, you know, those stats like, you know, are like, you know, saying that like, COD's growing. But like, as far as like the COD scene right now that we're in, you know, the competitive scene, like, I think, I think that like, yeah, like the lack of content, like a lot of these pros like keep their head down. Like they don't tweet, you know, they don't, they don't talk a lot. You know, they, they, they literally put their hoods up at events. Like they're not, they're not, you know, like they, a lot of these under, uh, these kids that are coming up, like they don't, they're just trying to stay silent and move on their own, which like, I, I understand. But like when you're, when you're outspoken and like you're doing the content and stuff like that, like that is better for the scene. You know, it grows the scene. Yeah. Um, so like a lot of these pros are just like keeping to themselves and like, they're not really doing no content or like, or are really like trying to grow the scene. You know what I mean? So I think, I think it could hurt COD and like, as far as like the underagers go, like coming in, like you don't see a lot of those anymore. I mean, I think it's just the fact that like, you know, like you can't go pro like as an underager anymore. And like, I, and like, yeah. And like, and like, yeah, like there are a lot of underage, like, 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 you know, land kids like back in BO3 and stuff. But it, it, it like the, the, you know, I feel like that scene died out, like the, Kind of like the local scene, you know what I yeah. mean? Like that, I think that scene died out. Like, and like Rod stopped hosting the tournaments. Like he stopped like hosting the tournaments. Like, yeah. I mean, there were there were like barely any locals this year. I, mean, I know Corona hit, but like there just weren't like locals this year. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like that's why like a lot of these underage kids just aren't coming into the scene anymore. Like they can go pro in other games. Like Fortnite, like Fortnite killed COD like big time. Like a lot of the underage kids went to Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, because they had a bigger opportunity, I mean, and that's shit, I went of, for a few months. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of the underage kids went to Fortnite. Like, that's pretty much where it's at right now. Like, Valorant, Apex, and these bigger games came out, and like it just posted a bigger opportunity for like these kids. So, do yeah, you think, think there's? Oh shit! I'm sorry, Colby. I'm gonna cut you off. You gotta hold that question. <laughs> oh, it's not a question. I was just saying it looks okay. fine. So, you were saying how S and D died off, and how all these underagers, um pretty much have bigger opportunities but do you think that there is a room for this renaissance of the S D community that these underagers could really take into their hands considering these uh, the, you know as a younger kid your brain absorbs things like a sponge so if these players you know master that S D gameplay then they can bring so much to these teams when they do turn 18 they could either be analysts they could be creating content in that whole time period they have and then when they turn 18 they can just put their heads down they already have all that following or whatever that they have behind them and they can put their foot down so do you think there is room for that renaissance or do you think that warzone has kind of taken the S D community spot i mean for sure br has like changed the game when it comes to that stuff like S and D, like in general, like you're not just caught like as like a game mode was like blowing up, like CS:GO, Rainbow Six, like S and D in general was like a like a just a game mode that like like that blew up, and I mm-hmm. think BR became a bigger game mode, mm-hmm. you know, like I, in, in terms of like video games. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, as far as S and D coming back and there being like a renaissance, like you know, like yeah, like for sure these underage kids can bring it back. Like, no one's entering tournaments anymore. No one's streaming tournaments. These big, the big prime tournaments that everyone used to like get. Like wake up, get teams for like they would get teams oh, for like a week before, yeah. like play chows leading up to the tournament. Like those big tournaments just aren't like that anymore. Like they're getting like I've seen the prime tournament get eight teams. Like they're just not like that anymore. And like they gotta bring it back if you want to see like a resurgence of the S and D scene. But like as far as like being you know like like it like helping with like, your career like for sure like when when I remember back when like I W like Phase had hit up like season like seasons like Dashi Selyum and we saw this. When when face hit him up, they like paid him to like teach him S and D strats. I remember it was telling me about it. Like they paid him to teach him S and D strats. Like LG or LG paid them to teach him S and D strats, and LG won an event right after that. So like there's there's proof that like that shit works. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like like after, you know for sure. Like Tupac was just like Tupac, Teddy Rex. Like they were they they got you know franchise spots just to teach like S and D. So like there's for sure like and I seen Hitch tweet something out that was like there might be S and D subs like you were put in the game just for like to play S and D which I don't know if like you know that might happen but like there's for sure like you know this chance that I could come back mm-hmm. it's just it all depends on the players right now it all depends you know you know it all depends it's in their hands you know like and it really depends on like what, like what everyone decides to do okay Colby what were you gonna say earlier before I cut you off. 
Um, so we were talking about, um, this is just a general statement, but we were talking about like, uh, the younger age of COD kids, like when we were all growing up playing for like underage variant, like there was tons of kids. Um, and nowadays, yeah, like it feels like you don't see those. And we had talked about like most kids going to Fortnite. And I think, I think when it comes to an underage scene, I think we are dying off, but I think skill level wise, I think every year we're getting more and more competitive. And um, I think benefits to that is other games dying out. Um, So like Gears hasn't had a new game in a while. Halo hasn't had a new game for a while. We just had Shotzi and Hugh come over from Halo. I just saw another uh, Gears player that's coming over. I think his name is Mensel. Mensel, Mensel. Yeah, he's like a 22-time champion on Gears or something like that. So that, I think... I think those God damn. we got Crim Six coming over. And I think something along that lines is kinda of gonna be how I feel like Valorant is turning out to be, where you have all these players from these different in the in that case, mouse and keyboard games. If you have your Overwatch players, you have your CS players, you have kids who just picked up Valorant in the beta and realized they were disgusting at it. Um, so I think if we can develop a better underage track. Like, I think that's why we don't see underage players. It's because kind of like, hey, you just got to wait till you're 18. Sorry, nothing we can do about it. Like, when we again, when we were all underage, we had the s and scene to go through. We had locals, and we had all that stuff to, like, actually, like, grind for. And which, build our brand. Which do you think yeah. could kill the COD community? Because, in a sense, uh, a lot of players, when you turn 18 you're going to work or you're going to college or something, you don't necessarily have the time as an 18-year-old. It's kind of either you go the traditional route or you sacrifice it for Call of Duty. So it's like having to have players choose to make that sacrifice of their life, do you think, like I said, could ruin the COD community? Or do you think that if we had, uh, like we were saying earlier, an infrastructure for these younger players to compete along, that it would uh, you know, produce some more longevity? Um, I don't think that it would necessarily ruin, like, I don't think it would ruin the amount of kids who play COD. I think, if anything, we'd probably see a larger skill gap, like, amongst the pro scene. Okay. Like, I think I think we would see bigger and bigger differentials from, like, your top players, because I think, it's like, let's say, for example, like, there's no new young talent coming up. When these current pros like attach, like attach and Illy and all these guys who are from that eighteen to twenty three range, when they all get older and they start falling off, I think majority of the COD scene is going to be carried by these guys who are coming from Halo and Gears who are coming over. Um, the only reason I could see that messing competitive Call of Duty up is because we have Halo Infinite coming out next year. I think. Oh shit. I, I think the next Gears is in the works. And then, for all we know, we'll have even more BR games that come out that might attract uh, our community. Halo, bro. You know, I have actually a question. For, I have a question for all of you. I guess mainly Ralphie, but all y'all can answer this. Um, I mean, Kobe just spoke on it a lot. Really, COD is kind of like the last like strand of actual big console esports. Now, I have a question to you guys. Do you guys think that COD just would make the move the PC, and I don't mean by using mouse and keyboard, I just mean using, like, the PC as, like, the console, right? You would still be required on a competitive setting to be using a controller, but do you think that's something um, they should be doing or pushing towards? We can start with Ralphie. Um, you know, I've, you know, like, I've talked about this with friends. I think it would create a problem in terms of, like, people being able to afford to, like, play the game. PCs are, like, really expensive. And, like, I, I've seen some, like, kids win on these ghetto setups, you know what I mean? Like, a laptop and, like, a, you know, 32-inch monitor, right, default controller. But, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know what I mean? Like, but but it, it creates this, like, thing, like, people are going to have to spend, like, sixteen, twenty hundred dollars $2,800 on, like, like, a PC just to, like, play competitive COD. And I feel like if people are going to do that, like, if people are going to buy a PC, then they might as well just end up playing a, a different game, you know what I mean? That's just that's just I mean that's just my opinion on, on like the PC switch. I think I I want Colby to go next because I I have a couple of opinions on this. Yeah, right. I want to hear what he All says. Right. Um, I kind of agree with Ravi. I think I think it definitely be a big step. Um, I think it would when it comes to 
gameplay and graphics and all that stuff, I think it definitely appeal a lot more to the viewer. Um, but I think, and kind of expand on what he was talking about, I think it would kind of entice a more pay-to-win lifestyle. Because mm-hmm. um, obviously, like, you can get a PC for $500, but that's not, you're going to run lower frames, you're going to have lower hertz, you're probably going to have a lower hertz monitor. All this extra stuff that, uh, like, I think I think it was Blast, like, before he got his, uh, before he had gotten, before uh, Gorillaz removed his plus one on his contract extension, he was going to get a $5,000 PC. And so it's, um, I think if they went PC route, I think we would really have to step up with the underage scene and kind of, in theory, kind of preparing these kids and give them time to start building up their uh, systems. So I agree with the underage thing. Um, I think the only way that, because COD right now, since it's a mature video game, you have to be 18 to play it professionally. So there's no way around that and to having that underage um, be a thing anymore. So we really have to focus on that, uh, like we were saying, amateur side and talent scouting kind of thing. I know Colby can kind of look at this analogy in a sense. Um, Lacrosse, in a way, the major league lacrosse scene is almost obsolete compared to college lacrosse and high school lacrosse. Like, there's so much more tension around college and high school because, you know, these players are younger, there's so much more potential, and it's to see where these players can go. And it's more of everybody, yeah, the M, you know, the MLL is there, but everybody's talent scouting. And there's such, like, there's not enough teams that all these players would get the time of day that they need. There needs to be more teams in the league if we do switch to PC. I also think that we'd lose a lot of the players we currently have. Like we were saying, people can't make that transfer. A lot of people play COD because it is like pretty much the cheapest esport you can get into besides Fortnite. And and even yeah. then, it's like pick your battles. You're going to make money in Fortnite almost directly. It's easier to make money in the game right then and there than it is Call of Duty. So there needs to be more of like an in-game competitive built infrastructure that doesn't need to be any kind of sites like CMG, UMG, that shit needs to all be built into the game. And that's the only way I think the Call of Duty is going to thrive and survive if it switches to PC because so many people from the CS community are going to be like, oh, we've got a new eSport we can compete in. If we're dog shit at CS, let's go play COD. All these COD kids are stupid. And it could be so easy for these CS kids to just come over and mollywop everyone. So if there's no way to keep that um, infrastructure in place, I think that uh, it, it would just go down a deep, dark rabbit hole and it would turn into CS, one of those esports that just kind of people talk about, but it, it's not the height that it used to be. Yeah, so speaking on the college lacrosse thing, because um, I'm sure you three probably don't know this. I'm sure most majority of people who watch who are going to watch this probably don't know this, but um, the talent recruiting of underage, like in this case, underage players had gotten so bad they had to put a rule in where coaches could not contact uh high schoolers until september 1st of their junior year because you had these kids who were in seventh and eighth grade and were getting scholarship offers to go play division one lacrosse because there was such a skill difference at the time like the kids who and john can attest this the kids who lacrosse is a sport where the majority of the time the longer the longer you're playing your skill level is going to be beyond any other kid that started like i started my sophomore year of high school so um i can so i think yeah i think uh back to the whole underage thing like i think talent scouting would be a big thing um and i think it wouldn't be as simple as like owners and like like i know clayster is really big on finding his own talent but i think or, or franchises would need to get to a point where they're hiring like dedicated talent scouts to go out and find those like one viewer streams of these kids uh, streaming scrims because there's always there's always some kid out there that had doesn't know how to network or anything like that and it's just raw talent that hasn't been built up yet. There's always a group of kids that blow up on like that one cod, you know what I mean? Like the 
you know, like don't play other cards. They're not like that. And then like this one card, this one card comes out, and they're just like that. You know, they're winning tournaments. Like they're nice. They're blowing up. And I've seen it every card. I've seen it on every card. Mm-hmm. So. So yeah, no, th- th- that's uh, even harder to track now though with locals gone and S and D tournaments gone. Like, you know how hard that's gonna be. That they like, see that's the problem with all this. I mean, like, it's just like a dead end because you don't know where to go. I mean, what are you gonna go watch someone who has like potential but shitting on pub kids? Like that that shows nothing to someone's yeah. stock. So tough. right right now, the biggest thing that I think the underage community has is Chitawanga tournaments. You know, mm-hmm. they are pretty much what UMG used to be, what CMG exactly. tournaments used to be. And I, I want to have that conversation with Cheeto that I know he wants to compete, he wants to play, but or maybe if he could either just pass the ranks off or he needs to be that person to take that step and take one for our community because we need something for the underage community and for the people that aren't pro right now, all the amateurs, to actually look forward to consistently. And not to a point like CMG was where it was so... it was eight times a day everybody could play it you know like it just it got oversaturated super easily there was no supply and demand you know he he has it right do you think that him stepping out and taking that leap could like i said potentially save our community or do you think that other people coming up could all try to do what they're doing right now and starting all these several different tournament hosting sites and having you know they're trying to bring different communities of players together, but it's it you know it's not the same as all one community thrive together. So where do you think that uh, there can be some changes made there, Ralphie? Um, I I think I agree with the with the you know with the Chitawanga thing. Like like you know those tournaments, I see the exact same like like you know like kind of like similarities with those tournaments and like the big S and D tournaments that used to go on. Like people, people, you know, search like for a god. They'll get like a god squad. Like they'll they'll get the best players you know they can get. Like you know, get ready for a tournament and then grind out like a two hundred fifty sixteen bracket, just like the big SMD tourneys. And like who and people will stream it. People will get viewers, you know, more viewers. Like you know, in the in the waiter rounds of the tournament, and like whoever wins, you know, gets like a bunch of clout. You know what I mean? And and like you know, even more importantly, money. So. Like it's it's like I you know I agree with that like I, I like what Chinawong is doing you know it, it's good for the casino it's good that underage players can play it the pros can play it pros can play it with underage kids like so it makes you know it gives the opportunity to like blow some of these you know kids up so I th- I definitely like what he's doing with that for sure. What do you guys think? Yeah, Colby and Leo? I think I think um I think uh, when it comes to those type of tournaments. Like with Cheetah Wong, I think he's doing an incredible job. UMG and CMG and all those sites are just completely like shot when it comes to SD. Like they're just, I mean, you know, what are you going to win and get $13, $14? I mean, you may as well play a chow. Like it's, you know, there's no, I guess there, there's no incentive to really enter those anymore. But the, the problem with this is that like right as you get other people who want to start doing it, it starts having the UMG CMG effect. I mean, I'm telling you, me and Ralph, you were in the SD scene before all of y'all. Right, Ralphie was like more high up there than I was like um, early on, and we can both can attest to this. When we were going into IW and we heard a new site was coming out, everyone was ecstatic. Like everyone was so hyped for the new like tournament site. Every it was about to be like, oh, SND's about to blow up. We're gonna have more money in this thing. You know, people are gonna start like, um, re- like really blowing up. Like there's gonna be like more simps and all that. You know, but it was a complete reverse effect. You know what I mean? So there, so. In my opinion, if there's people who want to continue on what Chita Wong is doing, they have to work with him. And at most, there's two different sites that work together and talk to each other and aren't competing against each other, but working with each other to make sure that there's not too much of an influx of tournaments, so that there's like, let's say, three big ones a week. You know like what I mean? So there's MLG, people can UMG prep and get days. ready for them. Right, right. We don't want eight tournaments every day. Do you know what I mean? There was a point where it was eight CMGs a day, five UMGs a day, and five GBs a day. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, man. Back in the Black Ops 2 community, the S&D was... It was there, but it wasn't like it was in, like, Black Ops 3 and, you know, Infinite Warfare. But back in, like I said, Black Ops 2 and Ghost, there were things like the PCL tournaments and shit. And then there was also 
Um, it would be the game battles tournaments. That, you know, there was at least one every day, but it would be like a weird thing, like a free for all or like a gun game or whatever. But it was like the big ones on the weekends were really big. People really give a fuck about those GB tournaments, and that was when GB yeah. like yeah, had yeah, everything yeah. back in the. And, like, even in Advanced Warfare, GB tournaments were crazy. And that's when UMG was really getting big with everything. And UMG, it was, like, it was a rotating door. It was, like, one weekend was MLG. And then the next weekend, everybody gave a fuck about UMG. And then the next weekend, MLG. And it just kind of rotated. So that's kind of, like you were saying, someone needs to work hand-in-hand with Cheeto. And that's kind of what they need to do. Something really interesting. I think this actually, this is what happened. Don't quote me on this, right? But I've heard people talk about this from people who like are pretty reliable. Mm-hmm. But like, what happened when CNG came in the game, right? Like, the competitive scene between UMG and, C- and GB were balanced. It was balanced in, U- in BO3. You know, I mean, there's a reason why when you won a gold, that shit mattered. Do you know what I mean? Like exactly. six golds on your account, bro. You know that? Okay, you're nice. Do you know what I mean? Like, th- think about that. That's like 1,200 bucks because each win is like 200 bucks. You know. And if you get a prime, well, that's a whole, you know, that's a crap load of money. So, like, gold actually mattered. But when CMG came into it, they wanted to just outdo everybody. So they wanted to do more tournaments so people would play more of their tournaments. Um, and then that's what happened. But And then it forced UMG and GB to keep up because CMG refused to work with them. And then it just completely killed the scene. Yeah. So. There, and, man, I don't know if y'all remember in, in like, in, in 17, like, Man, there were so many sides. There was like Ultra Arena, oh my, oh my Bad, god, Division, Omega. Like there was like a crazy. Bro, amount I had of my fighting. bookmarks at the top of my computer of every site. So it was Yo, whenever, so whenever it was like seven o'clock, I was like, all right, let's see what's up for seven o'clock. Boop 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 boop. I had ten tabs. <laughs> I'd be like, all right, two v two, four v four, one v one. The fuck? I'd be like, you know, just scrolling through, man. It was crazy, and like we were saying that. That was kind of the downfall of the S&D community. And yeah. was that kind of where you looked at it and you were like, I'm kind of glad that I'm not in this? Or were you trying to keep it going? I mean, I tried to keep it going as much as I could. Like, you know, like, BO4 was like where, I, like when I kind of dropped off. Like, I wasn't getting on every day, going to tournaments. Like, you know, like that was like my sophomore year of high school. So I was really like, you know, starting to like, like join like high school clubs and like do other things outside of COD, but I was still playing COD and but I would only get on for the big tournament. So like mm-hmm. I would hit up Terrorizing and I'd be like, hey yo, like, let's play this big tourney on this weekend or this big tourney on this weekend or whatever. Like you know, and I would just get on for the big tournament, stream and get off. You know what I mean? And I was having a good time doing that, but you know, like I I, ha- I had a feeling that like S and D just wasn't what it used to be. Like, you know, a lot of, like, my homies were turning 18 and were, like, going, were, were playing, like, amateur scene and yep. were, like, trying to go pro. So it was, like, all the people that I had in SMD scene, like, turned 18. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of like, all right, like, I'm going to just, I'm going to just wait, wait outside turn 18. I was before, like, I had to quit COD, but I was just going to wait outside turn 18 and kind of, like, stop playing. But when I, you know, when I, when I got back on, on here on Twitter, like, this year, like, on, like, back in May, like, I, I, I took a look at it and I'm like, man, like. SND is dead. There's no reason for me to come back. Like, like I, you know, like every, like every, almost everyone's 18. Like n- all the big guys are 18. Like no one's, you know, I got like it's just over. You know what I mean? And like, even and even getting in the amateur scene, it's like what's the point? Because like you you, the, you can't like qualify for champs through an LCQ anymore. There's an amateur champs. You gotta like pop off bad in every tournament. Like more than like someone crazy to get called up to the league and then it's like you get called up to the league you got to perform there or you're getting dropped after one tournament and it's online now too so it's like you gotta like you know what i mean stress the whole internet thing i'm like i can't i can't dude i'm from jersey but we got no fiber like yeah <laughs> so yeah. you know it's, it's just like, he's just not like that anymore it's just not worth it and that's why personally like like, like you know to like answer your question like yeah like i kind of was like I, I i that's when i realized like it just wasn't worth it anymore so do you think there, what kind of incentives do you think there is for someone to make it worth it now? You know, you were saying there's so many, it's, you were pointing out pretty much all the ways that you can't join the league, which are very logical points that you made. What ways are there for someone to want to play anymore with how difficult it is, the low acceptance rate? Like, what's, like you are saying, what's the point? Well, I can't lie. There isn't that, that one time a day where I'm like, imagine what it'd be like to hold that trophy on the stage. 
You know what I mean? And that feeling, that feeling goes for everyone, bro. If you're a competitive person, you want you want that. Like if you if you have a love for COD or any esport, you have a love for it, and you really want to like make that like man, bro. Like I don't know for I don't know about any of you, but for me growing up, like I was just like holy fuck, like I do not want to catch myself in like an office job. Same here, bro. I'm still thinking that. That's what I'm saying. Like I really like if you find something you love, you gotta run with that shit, no matter what anyone else says. Parents, friends, even your own gut. Like you gotta like run with that shit because that's what you love. And so like the incentive is really just like if you have a love for the game. And you want to go pro, like you want to hold that trophy, like you want to be the best. That's a bigger incentive than any of the the cons that I brought up. You know what I mean, straight up. But um, that's giving me the chills. I'm just thinking in, no, about it. that was a good response, man. Bro, that I'm gonna be honest. That that's the that that's so facts, man. Like, you couldn't yeah. have said it any better. Oh my god. I think with with that beautiful of a point, man, we gotta lead it into round eleven. So Colby, I'm gonna hand this off to you. Oh uh, shit! All right. Well, I'm not sure, John. I know you had your little notes, so I'm not sure if you have any other questions. But I'm gonna ask the basic one that we've asked everybody so yeah. far. So, even though you're at a scene, Ralphie, what are your three biggest off-season tips that AM should be doing this off-season? Okay. Um, number one is networking. Like a lot of these guys, like I said, and I'm not gonna name names, but I've seen a lot of these guys like are like bashing like other guys and they're like blah, blah blah like nah bro you gotta network get cool with these other ams some of these guys that came up on in w i get it they're mw come ups you disrespect them whatever get cool with them they're gonna be nice at cold war whether you like it or not so hit them up uh number two um grind out the stream a little bit like i said you know i did say streaming's dead but like you know like you're you're still playing cod like, you gotta you gotta get your name out there so grind out these cheetah wonga tournaments these throwback tournaments you know, get your stream out there. Um, and then number three, I mean, this is probably, this is probably the biggest tip, but keep grinding, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, keep playing. Like, a, you know, don't don't take don't don't take time off. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you like if you want, if you want to take like, some time off, like, I get it, but you gotta keep grinding. You know what I mean? Like, and and for me, you know, like I don't want to say, you know, I do say like I'm done competing, but I don't want to say I'm done with the scene. Like I'll, I'll, I'll hop in an event or two. Like I'll go to a land or like hang out with some homies at a land or like shit. Y'all want me to coach? Like hit me up. But as far as playing goes, like that's it for me. But um, you know that that those are my tips for Ams. Those are my tips for Ams for sure. Hey man, thank you so much for coming on. And I I'm glad hey, that you've uh you've gotten yourself up on you you got the ball rolling, man. I hope to see you go strides in the future, man. Yeah, we can probably want to have you, man. You Stay too, safe, man. You man. Too. Hey, this podcast been evolved, bro. Hey, man. Thank you. I'm trying. Oh, I'm man. Trying. Every yeah, day we yeah. got something new going. That's the biggest thing, yeah, man. Yeah. Hopefully, everybody watching has a great rest of the day. Like I said, everyone on here. Hope you guys. Peace.